Welcome to the Love Holistic Living Podcast, your roadmap to heal and align mind, body, and soul and become intuitive through food, pleasure, and spirituality with your host and Italian friend, Sara Garofalo. Welcome back to another podcast episode with Sara here today, directly from Italy on how to let go. We're going to be talking about the signs you've let go and the process of letting go and what it means. So we're going to go through like six steps on helping you to fully let go of a connection. I know that some people really struggle with this process, so it's better for you to understand it all so that you can go home with all these tools and practice Because it's not fun when you keep lingering and you keep ruminating and you keep feeling stuck over a connection that is either past, gone, or done. And your life needs to move forward. And as always, we are committed here at Lovelistic Living to guide you through the healing process, even though sometimes it's under different names. For example, how to disconnect from a soul tie, how to release trauma from the body. So we might give you different tools on how to do this, but it's so important if you want to become the most powerful magnetic version of yourself, which is the reconnection between you your higher self and you. But since I'm here in Italy and I've been here for two and a half weeks right now, I'm going to give you a little bit of an update before getting into this amazing video that I'm so glad you guys have asked in your Instagram questions and also in my DMs because without you guys, We cannot give you the tools that you need. So feel free to leave comments, DM on Instagram at love.holistic.living so that we can create content for you. Now, I have been here for two and a half weeks and I've been so lucky to be able to travel to the Cinque Terre for a weekend, which Actually, I did not realize how beautiful it was, and it is. The view is astonishing, and the food is so great and good. Definitely not cheap because it's so touristy and so small that there is a lot of demand. But if you get a chance to go there, please visit the Cinque Terre because, again, It's so beautiful. It feels like you're in a movie and in another reality. And then I went to Sardinia, which you may have known this as Sardinia, which is the island that is in Mar Terreno, the Terreno Sea. And it has one of the most beautiful beaches I've ever been I actually prefer this than Hawaii just because there is the Italian food and the Italian energy. The sea is so blue that you feel like you are in a pool, like you're living the dream. So if you ever get a chance to go to Sardinia, make sure that you tag me because I miss it already. I went there with family and it was so great. But nonetheless, I wanted to say that if you've wanted, ever wanted to experience life through the Italian eyes of a spiritual healer, which is me, then make sure that you join the waitlist for the upcoming Italy retreat because it's coming. I also travel to different resorts up in the northern Italy to spot the new retreat a resort, which I believe I founded. It's going to be an amazing week full of mind, body, and soul experiences that are necessary and will have an impact on your awakening of the feminine energy 
Italy has a powerful energy to shift you into the feminine energy, intuition, awaken your sacral chakra, but also to awaken la dolce vita with the food and the fashion and the beauty and pleasure. So make sure that you add your name on that wait list. But let's get started because I know you are impatient as much as I am to go through this episode, which is how to let go. Now, the first step is to acknowledge the why. You want to let go of this relationship. And maybe your why is because you've cried so much that you're exhausted and you feel the relationship has run its course. And that is totally fine. Or maybe it's because you've been betrayed. Or maybe it's because you don't feel the same energy back, the same impact you know, that you have on the other person. The other person is not giving you what you give them, the support. So there are different reasons, but it's important for you to understand why you want to let go. And maybe you already know this, but just get clear. Because then when you get clear on the why it's necessary for you to move on, okay, even though sometimes it's really painful, I've had people say to me, I don't want to let go, but I know that I have to let go, if you know what that means. And that is, I think, the most painful moment or experience to go through because maybe the relationship has been good or okay or somewhat like in the green zone but you know that there is more and it's just time to to go so that person didn't actually do anything or you didn't do anything but it's just time and I think that is a very hard transition but it's necessary and you feel it from the inside now the second step which I believe it's the most important and also the one that people miss all the time. They try to spiritual bypass the step number two, which is allowing yourself to grieve. But in order to allow yourself to grieve, you have to become super aware of the emotions that are attaching you to this relationship and sometimes it's not just sadness sometimes you have to go through anger frustration to get to hurt to get to forgiveness you cannot actually get to a place of forgiving not only the other person but yourself and oftentimes that's what people struggle with the most is forgiving themselves for staying that long, for putting up with the BS for too long. So allowing yourself to grieve again is the process of acknowledging your emotions and allow them to be there without judging them. And literally grieving, grieving is the process of crying, of feeling angry or punching a pillow or going for a run or a workout to express those feelings. Everyone processes feelings in different ways. I, for example, used to process them through the workouts, through I did martial arts for many, many years. And then I transitioned to processing them through crying. And I used to be so afraid of crying and now like I love my moment of like release because they're so sacred because once that's off your chest you feel like rejuvenated it's kind of weird to say but you know when you've cried so much that you're exhausted but then like you know that there is peace on the other end so allow yourself to grieve that's okay. Nothing is nothing bad is going to happen. And sometimes the fear is blocking you or might be blocking. Step number three is establishing boundaries. 
because sometimes you want to reconnect. It's totally normal. Or they want to reconnect or you both want to reconnect. So understand that it can happen, but is it doing any good to you or them? And you got to find that strength within to put yourself first and understand what do I need? Do I need to keep going back and forth? Can I still talk to this person? Do I need to take a month off? Or if it's toxic, you just need to block this person. That is up to you. And allow yourself to test a few things. So for example, some people feel like they're going to fail at it. And I'm like, try it. If you want to stay in contact with like once a week, hey, how are you? But then it doesn't work out and you need the no contact for a few months, then do it. But allow yourself to not be afraid of failing. That is so important because the harder you are on yourself, the harder it is for you to let go, to move past this process. And remember to seek support. Sometimes you have to do it all. And sometimes you don't have to do it all. Remember to seek out the real friend that is going to help you go through that process. And you're going to understand who are your friends right away. And in case you're interested and ready right now, take the first step right now. Click the link below on how to cut the soul tie, which is a mini course created for you on guiding you through the meditations the soul cutting rituals and the processing of the emotions so that you can finally let go, process and move on with your life and reclaim your energy. I'm going to add that link down below on how to cut the soul tie. It's only $47 and this information will be with you forever. You can redo it over and over. So many people have found so much of success instead of all of the other cord cutting rituals that they've tried. So make sure that you take the next step right now. Now, step number four is to create a new path. And what I mean by that is that you cannot move forward if you don't set new goals. And you what I mean by that is allow yourself to grieve, but at the same time, create this maybe new routine and or cleanse your home, your room, your personal things from their energy and I tell this to all my clients that maybe have had to let go of a lover or a friend that they need to cleanse literally the space not just their emotions but they need to go through the house and or the room and or their personal items and kind of look at what there is left of the other person, memories, photographs, objects, presents, gifts, because objects, gifts, and memories, what we call them, they hold energies. And every time you keep them around, you are constantly and subconsciously reminded of that person so I recommend if you're really ready to move on to take a box and go through the house even clothes and put everything in a box you don't need to throw them away or give them to the thrift store if that's really hard for you some people are emotionally more sensitive and that is a very hard process than maybe others like I I'm someone that deals with changes in a faster way than most people, I would say, but I have clients that take months and that is okay. So what I recommend is put them in a box, put them in the garage, but at least it's not there, the constant reminder of this person's energy or memories. Okay, that will facilitate the letting go process. Step number five is absolutely important because this is the emotional process you need in order to release it completely, which is forgiveness. Again, you've got to go through step number two first, but then at this point, you need to be able or you are able to forgive them, but most importantly, you because who stayed when you needed to to like move on at that time it was you and maybe you convinced yourself that they would change maybe you tried it all maybe you 
went another year so you feel like you've lost a year of your life and you've got to forgive yourself and know that there is a divine plan for everything so the more you trust the process the easier it is to forgive and step six the embracing of the future what we mean by that is that you need to stay open oftentimes people go through the letting go and they close their heart and they're like i'll never love again I hear people all the time, even when I'm walking to a cafe, especially the other day, I was walking to a coffee shop, a bar, we call it, and there was an Italian young lady, I would say, probably like 35, 37, and she saw a another person from the village, and she's like, oh, bye, bye, and remember to never fall in love. We joke all the time, by the way, in Italy, but in that moment, I could pick up her suffering and I wanted to literally say her hurt you and what most people do is that they will close their heart forever but if you remain open and realize if that mindset to if it's not this it's something better then you know that there are seven billion people on the planet you're going to find a new friend you're going to find a new lover I mean don't be stuck in lack of mindset that was a stage it was great it was a relationship you both needed. You've learned the lesson. Look at the lesson, be grateful, and then realize that there is another phase and stage of life that is waiting for you with new people that are going to teach you maybe more beautiful lessons. So stay rooted in what was the lesson because you've got to learn the lesson if you don't want to repeat it, and then stay open. And what we mean is keep your heart open. Now, to answer the questions that so many of you asked, which is, what are the signs that I've let go? How do I understand that I've let go of someone? Well, the first thing first that I'm going to say to you is, you're going to notice it by the decrease of emotional intensity towards this person. So when you're able to finally either see this person, meet this person, talk to this person and not get triggered, not get heated, not have an emotional reaction of any kind, but just gratitude and or neutral. That's when you know you fully let go. And if there is any residuals that may pop up, then don't get frustrated. It's just an awareness that you still need to go through. At least it doesn't mean you failed. That just means that that relationship was so strong that you just need a little bit more time. And if you have a really big emotional reaction, then I would say maybe it's time to get emotional and professional support. And here at Love Holistic Living, in private session, we do that. We process the emotion from the body, from the subconscious, so that once you leave the session, you don't need to explain it. It's done. It's done. We close it together. So I'll pop the link down below in case you want to do it. So whether you want to do it in person and or by yourself through the mini course, I will add the link down below for you to check out because so many people have found freedom and were able to move forward with their life, which I think it's priceless because it's not okay for you to keep like working and not being able to function at work because you can't move forward from this person. So it's just priceless. Your healing journey is priceless. So I hope that this was helpful. Let me know in the comments down below and don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.